I've lost count of how many people have asked me why I bought Rhodes Manor. I should think the answer is self-evident. The Druid ruins, of course. The locals have long considered my plot of land haunted. In fact, the original house built on the property was burned by a mob of villagers back in the 1600s. The owner back then was a fellow named Edward Covington. He vanished the night the house was put to the torch. Everyone presumed he'd been killed by the mob. But we may never know, since his body was never found. This estate continues to provide tantalizing archaeological finds. Just yesterday, I uncovered a Viking paddle axe, most likely from the mid-ninth century. It's a stark reminder of the Viking conquest of this area, especially since I found this axe still embedded in a Celtic skull. The Viking arrival sounded the death knell for the Druids, but if local legends are to be believed, one group of Druids made their last stand right here on my estate. I hope to discover more about them. Another exciting find today. While digging in the garden next to the greenhouse, I unearthed a Celtic figurine of a creature I can only describe as a werewolf. This fits with the druid reverence for animals, but it's the combination of human and lupine features that intrigues me most. There is a local belief that the druids cursed their most powerful enemies, transforming them into beast guardians for their sacred oaks. Was this figurine linked to that superstition? Last month, I ventured into the old druid temple buried beneath my grove of oak trees. To my surprise, I found three fallen warriors bedecked in plate mail. I restored the armor and have them displayed in several locations on the estate. They are in remarkably good condition. Alas, the same cannot be said for the warriors' corpses. Local records indicate that in 1487, Sir John Wells, Sir Egbert Willoughby, and Sir Richard Whitville disappeared in this area. Now, if I could only determine what killed them. My druid research turned up at least one surprise. A former owner of this estate, Owen Pugh, played a key role in starting up modern druidry in the 1780s. Though well-intentioned, the modern druidic movement bears more resemblance to Freemasonry than to the actual druids of old. I have to wonder if Pew was aware of the history of this particular plot of land. Pew was eventually driven out of the organization after he got arrested for building a full-scale wicker man on this property. He spent his last years at Hoxton House Lunatic Asylum. I only hope I don't wind up there myself. Today I'm speaking with the widow Agnes Roth regarding the circumstances of her husband's death. Thomas. His name was Thomas. <coughs> yes. And last year, Thomas tried to set fire to the oak trees next to Rhodes Manor, correct? Right. He came home that night, stricken dumb. Couldn't manage a single word after that. Makes you wonder what black magic protects those woods, doesn't it? I suppose. If you're superstitious, that is. Was it superstition that made him burn our house down a couple of days later? Was it superstition that made him stay inside and burn along with it? I am sorry, Mrs. Roth. This is obviously a painful topic. Perhaps we should try this another day? 